Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another Flip the Crypt video. Today we're going to be transforming my entryway when you first walk in our front door because I hated how it was before. The whole first room in our house, even you know when you saw the house door and everything, I just was not vibing with that room. Something about it was weird. There was a little fake pony wall there, which you're not going to see in this video because we, we had a couple drinks one night and we knocked the wall down. But originally there was a fake pony wall and column in this room that really shortened the room made it smaller which we decided to remove and then i was like hey why don't we just make this a whole video it was just an impulse thing to rip up the column but then we decided we would do everything to make the nice floors change the entryway to more of a pretty space that i could actually enjoy so that's what we're doing today before we do the official like <laughs> Here's what the room looks like before to the transformation in the after. I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Dossier. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know I have so many good feelings towards Dossier because, well, I do like to waste money, but not on things that are like, ooh, this fancy label. I hate that. If I want to waste money on something, it's going to be something fun. So I'd rather save a bunch of money rather than getting name brand labels and stuff and get something with the same exact quality at a fraction of the price. Dossier has the same luxury fragrances you'll get at like Macy's or Sephora but not with that price tag of up to $350 that they can charge those stores. Dossier starts at only $29, up to $49. They have amazing scents for men, women, kind of unisex smells, which is great for someone like me who really likes more of a masculine kind of cologne like fragrance. I think of those more unisex because women can enjoy those scents too, and they have great scents at a fraction of the cost. Now, if you're looking for something floral or something more feminine, I do have a go-to feminine one. This one is called Fruity Magnolia. I know several of you guys have tried this one since I raved about it. It is a dupe for Versace's Bright Crystal, but again, way cheaper. I actually really enjoy the clean, pretty simplistic packaging on this, and then I'm not wasting money because it says Versace on it. Like, I don't need that in my life. I just need to smell fancy and luxurious. This is my go-to, like, womanly smell. It's very floral, but not too overly, like, powdery. It's light. It's just elegant. It smells like... It smells like a 90s supermodel in like the best sense. And then I also wanted to introduce you to another scent today that we're going to smell for the first time together. So this is powdery tobacco. It comes in this beautiful, simplistic packaging. This says it is inspired by Tom Ford's tobacco vanilla perfume. That smells really good. So it says top notes of tobacco, ginger and apricot, middle notes of honey, vanilla and cocoa, base notes of tonka bean, dry fruits and blonde woods. So again, really pretty simplistic packaging, same good scent, not nearly as expensive, which you guys know I'm all about. Okay, so this one has like a little bit of a yellow hue to it, same pretty packaging. Ooh! So when it said tobacco, I was expecting like heaviness. This doesn't feel heavy at all. I get some of that tobacco-y kind of like tobacco leaf situation with a little bit of honey smell to it. It smells like, this is definitely again like a unisex smell. This one smells really nice. I get a lot of the tobacco-y honey situation without being heavy. It's still a very light, airy perfume, which smells really nice. So if you guys like something that has like a little bit of, maybe like a woodsy note to it, but not too overly heavy, this will be perfect for you. Why is he distracting me back here? <laughs> Ignore the baby or listen to me talk and watch the baby. But this is a really great choice for someone who wants something that has a little bit of woodsy, but not overly masculine. So that is this one. If you guys want to check out Dossier, I will leave them top of the description box. You will not be disappointed. I do a special link. You can use that as well. And now let's get into the transformation of my entryway. Okay, welcome to our freshly demolished entryway situation. So this entryway is super boring. Uh, we had this vinyl through it, but when we took out this pony wall, we exposed the old linoleum, an old layer of white tile, an old layer of this tile underneath of the final, many layers. But we wanted to strip it down because we had problems with our door not opening. We had to like force it open because everything was just laid down improperly. So we took down the vinyl planks that were here because they were improperly installed. And we exposed this tile and we're going to retile it to make it more of a mudroom entryway situation. I'll make a bench here to put our shoes um, inside of for extra storage and stuff and a place for the cats to sit and look outside. So this is our before. It is pretty rough, y'all. 
Okay, so the first thing we have to do, obviously, for this entryway makeover is fix the floor. The floor is the problem. We have some of this OBS board. You taught me that word. That we're going to use to patch the floor to make it up to the right height where this wall was originally. We had this cut in thirds by Home Depot. He trimmed it down to match the pole that's not completely even. For some reason, it's like thicker down here than in here. Check out this hideous brown linoleum that was originally installed in our house in the early 60s. It's it's bad, especially for the time. It would be more classic, pretty, and fun. Okay, husband's removing his first layer of tile. One sec. Huh? One sec. So husband's removing this this beige ugly tile. There is another layer of tile underneath that I like, but it's damaged and cracked and stuff. So he's taking this top layer of tile off so we can make it level with this plywood and also so our door will have clearance. With two layers, it's kind of iffy, so smash away, honey. the sticky mixture <laughs> to you know harden everything and then we're gonna do the grout but everything right now is looking pretty good it's gonna look a lot better inevitably when these floors these vinyl floors are darker but I'm just glad there's progress today it's been a while since I last spoke to you in this video it's grout day the tile is gross and dirty but once the grout is done we're gonna clean it all off husband got knee pads husband come show knee pads Come show knee pads, petting baby. He's got knee pads, he's got scrawny legs. So they kind of loose. <laughs> but yesterday, crawling around, putting the tile down, not good on the knees. So today's grout day, which is like almost done with the tiling process. Since it is still the beige that everything in the house came with, we decided to go with a darker gray. The rest of our house is a very light gray. Um, for the majority of it, like the dining room, the kitchen's gonna be the light gray. The kind of den in between the living room, the living room, and our office are all a very light gray. And one of the bedrooms with the cat stuff in it. But for this room, because of the Michaels new Halloween line that came out this year that I'm in love with, it's a little more moody, a little more oddities. I thought about black but I don't want this room to look smaller than it already is. So we're gonna go with shark fin, which is a bare color. It's a deeper kind of medium gray. I wouldn't say it's like a super dark gray, but I wouldn't say it's a light gray either. So we're gonna call it a medium. This is also the room that I'm using in my small business shop room. Um, that color looks nice in that walls. It is a little dark, but I think for the theme of this room, it's gonna make sense. So I have one and a half cans of this. We're gonna try to do this entire room, not just the entry that we're doing in today's makeover video, but the entire room just to make it match. And then as you go further in the house, all that's gonna be lighter. So just a moody entryway. All 
right, next project today, we have the quarter round on. The new quarter round that wraps between the tile and the floor. And we're gonna paint the quarter round as well as the trim. Now some areas like right here and stuff, we had incidents where the grout or the cement, the grout was on top of what the tile goes down. It made a mess um, and it got all over here. We scraped it and sanded it, but you can still see that something got on it. So we're gonna paint this with this Valspar door and trim. They only had semi-gloss at Home Depot, which sucks because I like satin finishes. Personally, I'd rather even have a flat thing, but they only had this. This is in a very light whitish gray color. And this is the only room in the house that's gonna have a different color trim, but this room's also gonna be a spooky oddity theme. So I think you're having a slightly off color trim. No one's gonna know but me that it's a cooler tone trim because it is very white. But I, I thought it would match and look better than just a pure white and a semi-gloss. So here's the color on the brush. It looks white, but I just made sure it was a cool tone, not a warm tone. And I'm just gonna give this a light coat everywhere. If I see a difference, like if I see something looks weird or off, I will sponge touch it up later. And I also brought baby wipes in here in case I get it on the tile, the floor, or the wall. All right, so it is reveal time. I actually closed the window just because it was hard to see with all the light coming in. So I will open them up momentarily, but here we have our tile. It looks good. It's not the cleanest in the world right now, but that's because we have another project going on in the opposite wall of this room. We have a beautiful plants, some little spooky things. The shoe rack I hid behind the big bench that we got. We have some spooky pictures on this wall. Our beautiful, <laughs> curtains, the bench for the room, a pumpkin, over here by the light switch we have a crow, over here on this windowsill we have a skull and a little cauldron just for your like, little drop off stuff like sunglasses and stuff when you walk in the door, our bat for our keys, and then here is a little, just a little walkway area. This beautiful gallery wall is still a work in progress. This is the big wall, you know? So I just started kind of in the center along this little table situation, and we can work our way out eventually if we need to. This table does need to be repainted. When I was painting the walls, I got paint on this table, so I'll have to repaint top eventually, but I do have our Cracker Barrel Ghost here, a candle on a skull, and then our anatomical heart from Michael's with some fake plants coming out. And then again, the wall is lovely i wanted dimension so i went with things that were flat like pictures things that were more 3d a little bit of metal a metal, little bit of wood a full spine <laughs> so i wanted dimension and texture on this wall i think it came out very well down here we have the cat water fountain which i unplugged for audio and right now but this is our entryway let me open the window so with the window open here is what the room is looking like you can see the bench really good deal for twenty dollars the curtains have this beautiful drapery situation. And then along the drape things, we have the Cracker Barrel Ghost ornaments for Christmas trees that I use as accents for our curtain rods. And I think it came out really nice. This fabric on this curtain is originally from Joann's a couple years ago. We did as much work repairing the leather as we could on the side since they were glued in. So they're not perfect, but it does look good with this kind of bony pattern, the off-white with some of the off-white and bones on the wall here. So I think it came out pretty well, but I do kind of want to do more tile in the future because this came out really pretty. It's just a little bit harder to clean. All right, you guys. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think the tile really did make the biggest difference in this room, but also not having a wall with a column 
it, that shortened the room so much now it feels nice and open i do feel like the bench we got to transform is a little big for the room Cortland loves it though and it was only 20 dollars at the flea market and i already had the spray paint to spray paint it i already had the dye to touch up some of the leather and i already had the fabric to do the main seat so it really did work out 20 dollars said and done i feel like we kind of needed that i did kind of try a whole bunch of different decorations in that space to see what would fit there i thought maybe the shoe rack would be a little too cluttered but it is practical now and it does do what it needs to do so anyways thank you guys so much for watching today's video let me know what space you want us to do next down below i want it to be the kitchen but kitchen countertops sound expensive <laughs> anyways thank you guys so much i will see you later bye